This is KGW News at 5. Most of the experts in the United States don't think that this is going to affect the effectiveness of the vaccine. Some encouraging words from an Oregon health expert after Colorado confirms the first known case of that new COVID-19 variant in America. It was earlier just reported in the United Kingdom. Thanks for joining us. I'm Pat Doris. Now that we know the variant is in the United States, what's next? Keely Chalmers spoke with two experts. So December was uh, an amazing month. I think people really took seriously the calls to take precautions ahead of Thanksgiving. Multnomah County's top doctor says although we're still seeing hundreds of new COVID cases every day across the Portland metro area, the overall case numbers and hospitalizations are stabilizing. Cases even slightly decreased over the last few weeks which is incredible uh, when you look at the rest of the country. But Dr. Jennifer Vines warns the risk is still high. We are nervous to see what happens in January following, following both Christmas and New Year's. And now confirmation that the highly infectious coronavirus variant has been discovered in Colorado. Well, first of all, we know that, that coronavirus, like other viruses, mutate all the time. Dr. Joe Sullivan is senior health advisor for Oregon Health Authority. He says this latest variant, discovered first in the United Kingdom and now in Colorado, is interesting in that it can spread much faster than the others. The number of cases associated with this, this particular uh, variant is really high, so probably 60 percent right now of all the cases in London and Southern UK are related to this particular variant, which means that it, uh, it suggests that it's spreading faster. But Dr. Sullivan says most experts do not think this new mutation is going to impact the effectiveness of the COVID vaccine. That's because structurally the viruses are the same. The UK is using the Pfizer vaccine right now, so health experts there will be monitoring to see if people who get vaccinated get this variant. But they do not expect that will be the case. Dr. Sullivan says Oregon recently got funding that will allow experts here to do the same. Um, I think that that's still a possibility. I think the thing that people need to remember is there's no evidence that this variant is more dangerous in that it causes more severe disease. In fact, it may cause less severe disease. Uh, we don't know yet. Dr. Sullivan points out because this new form of the virus spreads easier, it's even more important people get vaccinated when they're able to do so. In Portland, Keeley Chalmers, KGW News. Thanks, Keeley. Now to pandemic help. You might want to check your bank account. Some people might get their $600 stimulus checks as early as tonight. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin made the announcement on Twitter this afternoon. The government will also start mailing out paper checks tomorrow for those who have not given their banking info to the IRS. Democrats and President Trump are still pushing for larger stimulus payments of $2,000, but Senate Majority we'll Leader Mitch McConnell blocked a vote on that today. Well, we know that you do have a lot of questions about this new stimulus round, including are you eligible to get the money? Here's Jason Puckett with tonight's Verify. Viewer Allison W. asked us if the new round of stimulus checks will still use 2019 tax information to determine who's eligible, even if you've been laid off due to COVID. And that's a great question, Allison, so let's find out. Our sources are the new stimulus bill itself and the National Conference of State Legislatures. So the new stimulus comes from this 5,600 page bill. Like the CARES Act earlier this year, the government is giving a tax credit on your upcoming 2020 taxes, which they're giving you now as an advance refund. This credit is not taxed. So how do they know you're eligible? Well, scroll down and you see that they're basing it on your 2019 tax filings. So if your 2019 filing shows you made less than 75,000 as an individual or 150,000 on a joint filing, you qualify for the full amount. So to Allison's question, yes, the new stimulus checks are still based on the 2019 tax filings. That's verified. But as Allison pointed out, there are some people that get left out by only looking at 2019 tax filings. Dependents like college students may now have jobs and qualify, or people who may have had too high of income in 2019 may have lost their jobs or have a loss in income that would make them eligible as well. So what happens to these people? Well, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures, they will still get the stimulus credits, just not right now. Both the new stimulus and the CARES Act are technically credits on your upcoming 2020 tax filings. So when you file in the next few months, if you qualify but haven't received the credits yet, it will be given to you as a refund at that point. 
Folks, there's a lot of information and misinformation about these stimulus checks. If you see other claims or rumors you want us to look into, send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. We have an update now on last week's deadly shooting at Peace Health Medical Building in Vancouver. Court documents reveal the shooter was upset over his appointment time. Those documents say 58-year-old Douglas Moore showed up hours early for an appointment there. Then he got angry that he could not be seen right away. Investigators say he left the building, then returned a few minutes later armed and shot and killed a 20-year-old woman working in the lobby before fatally shooting himself. Oregon State Police are asking for help identifying the remains of a young girl found in rural Lincoln County. Troopers say the remains were found December 10th in the HB Van Duzer Forest Scenic Corridor. That's part of Highway 18 between the towns of Otis and Grand Ronde. Investigators say the girl was between six and a half and 10 years old. She was between three foot 10 and four foot six and had long, dark brown or black hair. They're still trying to figure out her race or ethnic origin. Troopers say the remains were likely there for at least a month before they were discovered. They've not released the cause of death. If you have any information, call Oregon State Police at the number that's there on your screen. You know, we're going to miss it because it's part of us growing as a couple and, and, and through our lives. So we're just sad. A lot of small businesses run on a pretty tight margin, so disruptions like the pandemic may not be the only reason they go under, but it sure does not help. Add Vancouver Pizza Company in Uptown Village to the list of companies that are not going to make it to 2021. It's closing after nearly three decades. Catherine Cook reports. If you could sell joy in a box, it would probably come in this shape and smell of pepperoni and melted cheese. And if you bought it from Vancouver Pizza Company in Uptown Village, people would come from across the county to go to eat pizza here, so you know it was good. It might feel like 28 years of memories, each one a true slice of life. My husband and I on our first date came here for dinner after our movie. On this day, Kari Gamel came here to so, say goodbye. So we come here often and we've been trying to support you as much as we can. Well, thank you. So, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Vancouver Pizza is closing after almost 28 years. Cliff McMillan and his wife Karen have owned the restaurant for nearly 21 of those 28 years. On New Year's Eve, they'll close for good. When the dining room was closed the 14th of March, it just made it that much tougher. And so that was kind of the beginning of the end. McMillan says there were other factors besides the pandemic that led to their decision. The rising minimum wage, losing a beloved staff member, and increased parking issues. COVID was the final nail in the coffin. Earlier this year, McMillan received a federal paycheck protection loan, but says it wasn't enough to sustain them. And while Congress just passed another relief package that includes $284 billion for a second round of the Paycheck Protection Program. It's too little, too late. He says it won't save his business or his 12 employees' jobs. He hopes it will make a difference for other small businesses on the brink of closing. Hope that we see a light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, you got your dream, you got your business, you know, to keep working, keep pushing forward until you just can't anymore. When the last pizza comes off the line, McMillan says it will be with immeasurable gratitude. Thank you. For his staff um, and customers. We're just overwhelmed. Especially those like Kari Gamel. You know, we're going to miss it because it's part of us growing as a couple and, and, and through our lives. So we're just sad. Vancouver Pizza Company will stay open through December 31st or until they run out of food. The owner says that's likely what will happen, so you might want to call ahead before you drop by. In Vancouver, Catherine Cook, KGW News. By the way, the owners say despite closing the restaurant, they don't plan to retire just yet. They hope to start a new career and spend more time with their family. Well, after shutting down at the start of the pandemic, the DMV is still trying to fight through a backlog of thousands of customers. In Oregon, they're seeing 25,000 customers a week by appointment only right now. And those appointments are booked two to three months out. Earlier this year, state lawmakers passed a moratorium that would protect drivers from getting a citation for an expired registration or driver's license. That moratorium expires on December 31st. That's just two days from now. Now at the beginning of the year, 
although the moratorium has ended, we do have a grace period in place with law enforcement. And that means that Oregonians will have three months from when their card or their registration expired to get that handled with DMV. And so you can relax for a moment. That extra grace period will cover anyone whose license or registration expired after November 1st. You now have until April of next year to get them renewed through the DMV. By the way, one of my friends recently went through the process, said it was surprisingly efficient and fast. You can head to our website, KGW.com, to learn more about booking your appointment with the DMV.